Hi guys, welcome back to Besame. My name is Shernet Smith and today I'm going to be reading from this book and the story I'll be reading is called Do Not Enter by Carl Philpotts. <laughs> Do Not Enter by Carl Philpotts. I am tired of shooting lizards, said Peter to his friend Alvin. Then what will we shoot today? asked Alvin. Our slingshots have new rubber. We must go to the bush and see if we can shoot some birds. You know we can't go over to Old Man Jack's place and shoot any birds, Alvin. He put a big sign on his fence. Do not enter. Why should he put up a sign? Marked, do not enter, said Alvin. I wonder what he is hiding over there. Well, all I know is that he has honeybees and cows over there, said Peter. Honey and bees, said Alvin. Yes, replied Peter. He has plenty of honey. That is why the birds go over to his place. They go to eat honey. Ha ha, laughed Alvin holding his belly. What are you laughing for, Alvin? Alvin did not answer, but kept on laughing and holding his belly. Alvin was a very fat boy and loved to eat sweets. His granny could not keep anything sweet in the house because of him. Are you going to tell me why you are laughing and holding your belly, Alvin? Asked Peter. Alvin stopped laughing. I bet you are not as brave as I am, he said. You want to bet? replied Peter, jumping up. Peter liked to show how brave he was. If you told him to climb the tallest tree, he would do it just to show he was brave. Well, said Alvin, I love nothing like honey, and you love nothing like shooting birds. True? True, true, said Peter. Well, let us watch Old Man Jack. We can see when he takes out his cows, then we just go over, shoot birds, and eat honey. Peter was silent for a while. He was brave, yes, but to go to Old Man Jack's place when he was not there, that called for more than being brave. Old Man Jack was very old. He lived alone and spoke to no one except his cows and dogs. The last little boy he caught on his land, he locked up in his cow pen. The boy stayed there for one whole day. Old Man Jack gave the boy no food and he beat the boy before letting him go. Old Man Jack's friends were his cows, his bees, and his bad dogs. It's not that I don't want to go, Alvin, but, but suppose he catches us. He would beat us until we were black and blue, said Peter. Suppose, suppose your nose was a doorpost. Where would you put the hinges? What did you say? said Peter as he thought of an answer. I said, suppose your nose was a doorpost. Where would you put the hinges? said Alvin again. My nose could never be a doorpost, fathead, and hinges could never go on it, said Peter. Alvin went on. You mean you would really let old man Jack catch you, Peter? He can't even catch his cow. He is too old to run. Old Man Jack was very old. He had to walk with a stick. He could not see well or hear well. Peter thought about these things. Okay, Alvin, said Peter. Tomorrow we will go over there. Bright and early the next day, Alvin and Peter set out to watch the old man. The boys carried small stones in their pants pockets, and they also carried their slingshots. Alvin also carried a bottle. He carried it so he could put the honey in it. The boys ran up the dirt road and hid in the bush by Old Man Jack's land. Peter climbed a tall tree where he could see Old Man Jack's house over the fence. I see him, Alvin. He is taking out the cows. Get down on your belly, said Peter. Alvin dived on his belly in the bush, making a loud crash. Oh, why, why, cried Alvin. What happened, said Peter. Stop your noise, the man is coming. I dived into prickles, said Alvin. You fathead, shut up and keep quiet, said Peter. As soon as the old man was out of the way, 
Peter quickly and quietly jumped out of the tree. He walked over to Alvin. Alvin was on his belly in the prickles, hiding his face in the grass. Catch you, shouted Peter, holding on to Alvin's pants. It's not me, Mr. Jack, shouted Alvin. It's not me. Peter made a loud laugh. He laughed until his eyes were filled with water. Alvin slowly got up out of the prickles. Well, you won't laugh if the old man comes back and catches us, he said. You can stay there and laugh. Come, hurry up. Peter finally stopped laughing. Alvin looked at his belly to see if there were any prickles on it. Then quickly, they both jumped over old man Jack's fence and ran through the bushes. Peter knew that Alvin was more afraid than he was, but he also knew that Alvin liked honey too much to leave it alone. His bravery is in his belly, Peter thought. I have never seen so many birds before, said Alvin to Peter. Yes, Alvin, all kinds of birds. Look, see a fat dove over there? Where? asked Alvin. To your right, in the mango tree, replied Peter. Both boys moved quietly and slowly towards the dove in the tree. Look, Alvin, there is a bee box in the tree. It is full of honey and bees. Alvin licked his mouth and smiled. Honey for days, he said, feeling his pants pocket for the bottle. Yes, Alvin, but first we must get the dove, said Peter. Peter took a stone from his pants pocket. He then put the stone in his slingshot, aimed and fired at the dove. It nearly hit him, said Peter in a low voice. Yes, Peter, but nearly never killed a bird, said Alvin. The dove then flew very close to the bee box. This was right before Alvin's eyes. Watch me, said Alvin. This is how to use a slingshot. You have to aim good, Peter. Alvin aimed, but his eyes were more on the honey in the box than on the dove. Bam! went the stone on the bee box. Suddenly, there was nothing you could hear but the sound of many bees. Run, Alvin, run, shouted Peter as he took off at lightning speed through the bushes. But Alvin was too slow. Help! Help! Why? Why? cried Alvin as he tried to run. Granny! Granny! Why? Why? Bees! shouted Alvin as he ran up and down the place. Then came old man Jack's dogs, barking like mad. By this time, Peter was over the fence. He looked back to see how far behind Alvin was. He saw Alvin running as fast as he could, which was not very fast, to reach the fence. And this time it was not bees, but dogs running and barking after him. Run, Alvin, run, shouted Peter. The dogs were getting closer and closer. They were biting and barking at Alvin's feet. I must help Alvin, said Peter to himself. Peter put a stone in his slingshot and fired at the dogs. One of the dogs made a loud cry and stopped. Soon the others stopped running at Alvin. Alvin finally reached the fence. He made one big dive and came up on the other side. Peter wanted to laugh, but when he looked at Alvin, he could not. Alvin had at least six bee bites all over him, and the fence had cut a big piece out of his pants. Quick, quick, get three kinds of bush and rub them on me, cried Alvin as he took off his pants. Peter quickly got three kinds of bush and started to rub Alvin from head to foot. No wonder old man Jack put up the sign, do not enter, said Peter, as he rubbed the bush on Alvin. Yes, said Alvin, too many bees, too many bees. The end. <laughs> well, that was a good story for this fantastic spring day. The sun came out while I was reading. I feel so good. It's warm now. I'm loving it. Well, it's not nearly Jamaica, but it's good enough. <laughs> anyway. I really hope you liked the story. If you did, please remember to click the thumbs up, 
share it with your friends and consider subscribing to the channel if you have not yet done so. Until next time, bye bye.